Welcome to this presentation where we look at the, some of the classic golf holes. The cape hole is used to describe a golf hole where water runs along one side of the fairway to the green. The fairway slightly curves along the water but is not a dogleg hole. The green itself is surrounded by water on three sides. It is believed the original cape hole was designed by C.B. McDonald and National Golf Links. This rendition was done by a former student, Katerina Pock, in Diagrams the 14th Hole. This hole, located at Sea Pines in Hilton Head, South Carolina, is a classic example of a cape hole. From the tee, you can see the water runs along the left side. From the tee, the golfer has the option of trying to cut off as much yardage or distance of the hole as possible. Most cape holes are par fours. This is the same hole and you can see that the green is surrounded on three sides by water. The Eden type of golf hole is a medium length par 3 which would fall in the 160 to 180 yards in length. The green is sloped from back to front with two bunkers guarding the front of the green. The 11th hole at St. Andrews called Eden is a par 3 172 yard hole. The green slopes steeply from back to front it's protected by two bunkers. The hill bunker on the left and the strath bunker on the right. The strath bunker is a pop bunker and in the true sense Eden holes that are copied into golf course design have a pot bunker. This is the same 11th hole at St. Andrews but probably a better photograph than the one I took in the previous slide. Here is Seth Rayner's and C.B. McDonald's version of the Eden Hole at the Greenbrier in West Virginia. The green tilts from back to front but not as severe, but has the two bunkers positioned in a similar fashion as the original Eden Hole. As the name refers, the short hole is a par 3 of relatively short distance, normally in the 120 to 130 yard range. Generally, the green contours are the most complex found on the golf course. Sand usually surrounds the elevated green, giving the green an island look. Here's an artistic rendition of what a short hole would look like. The original short hole is believed to be the fifth at Royal West Norfolk. From the 18th tee, the short hole at Greenbrier has a relatively small green usually wider than deep, flanked or surrounded by bunkers. The green is normally elevated. The contours on the green can be exaggerated or complex. In this case, a horseshoe-shaped hump runs through the middle of the green. The effect is to put a premium on the short iron shot. Clear the mound in this case to where the pin is located gives you a great chance at a birdie. To leave it short or to the right results in a difficult putt to negotiate over or along the hump. Famous short holes include the 123 yard par 3 at Royal Troon known as the postage stamp because of the small green where the ball can easily fall off of or into one of the larger bunkers or hollows. The 7th at Pebble Beach that measures 106 or so yards is surrounded by sand. A variation of the short hole is shown here the par 3, 132 yards, 17th hole at TPC Sawgrass. In this case, water has replaced sand to give the hole a true island look. A Baritz hole, more specifically a Baritz green, is bisected by a deep gully in the middle of the green. The original hole was the third par 3 at the Baritz Golf Club in France. Willie Dunn Jr., before moving to the United States to design Shinnecock, was involved with his brother in designing the Baritz Golf Club. Here is an artistic view of what a Baritz green would look like on this par 3. Seth Rayner and C.B. McDonald incorporated Baritz style greens to some of their designs. For example, a Baritz hole exists at Greenbrier. This par 3, which is medium to long in length, you may be able to see the gully that cuts through the middle of the green. This par 3 that is medium to long in length, you may be able to make out the gully that cuts through the middle of the green. 
This is a classic look of a Barrett's green. It is important to get your shot to the right portion of the green or a difficult long putt through the gully could result. Bunkers are placed on each side of the green to protect the two sections of the green bisected by the gully. The Alps hole is popular on old courses through Scotland, England, and Ireland. An Alps hole has a large hill or mound that blocks the view of the green. Between the hill and the green is normally a cross bunker. Most Alp holes are the par 4s, but may be par 5s. Although the most challenging shot, also the most rewarding, is to hit over the hill to the green, an alternative safe route around the hill or mound exists. The original Alps hole is the 17th at Prestwick, which was designed by old Tom Morris. Here the green is protected by a bunker situated between the green and a large mound that would be located to the left of the bunker, which is unfortunately not visible in this photograph. At La Hinch Golf Club in Ireland, old Tom Morris designed the fourth hole known as the Klondike as an Alps type hole. Here on the tee of this par 5, you can see the 35 foot high sand dune in the background that blocks the green located behind the dune. C.B. McDonald designed the third hole at National Golf Links as an Alps hole. From the tee, you can see the hill located straight ahead on this par 4. Looking over the hill, you can see the cross bunker that protects the green. In this case, when I took this picture, the green was being aerified. The original 11 hole was believed to be the 7th 11 Links Golf Club in Scotland. The hole is a short par 4 that requires a heroic type of tee shot to an area in the fairway that will provide an open look to the green. A safer route will result in a second shot that is either blind or semi-blind. The 17th of National Golf Links is an example of 11 hole. A rather short hole that requires a heroic type of tee shot to carry to the flat open area of the fairway. A safer route towards where the two guys are walking will leave a semi-blind shot. The green is located behind the sand hill that is the cause of the semi-blind shot for the safer route. This concludes part one of the classic golf holes.